Hi, and welcome to question two of the 2022 paper one for the Leaving Cert Ordinary Level Maths. So as always, if you want to copy the notes I'm working off, just send me an email at shanetroy at gmail.com. And please like and subscribe to get access to more videos. So question two here is algebra. Okay, so it says to me, solve the following equation in X. Now, I'd always advise that you, um, in a sense, take a second, pause it, and try it yourself and see if you get the same answer as I get. Okay, so first thing I see, look, um, I generally rewrite the problem. That gives your brain a chance to just figure out what the hell is going on. Now, after doing that, I realized that the set of brackets here, and if I'm following the rules of bod mass, okay, I should remove brackets first. And if I can do that, I should be able to achieve the low partial. So going left to right, two times three X is six X, two times negative five is negative 10. And that's all I'm gonna do, okay? And then take a step back and go, I'm trying to solve this. Now to solve something, you need X on one side, everything else the far side. So the first thing I see here is, well, look, I don't have the X's on one side. So the question is, do you want to have all the X's on the right or all the X's on the left? Now, usually people prefer to have all the X's on one side and usually the left, okay? So in this case here, the four X, look, I'm gonna get rid of that. And one simple way to get rid of something is to take it away. Remember, I can do whatever I want to an equation as long as I do it to both sides. Now, what's the repercussions of that? Well, 6x take away 4x is 2x. Now, if I want to, at the same time here, I can go well, like minus 10 plus 8 is just negative 2. I owe someone 10 euro. Uh, I pay them 8 back. I owe them 2. Now, on the far side, 4x minus 4x is gone. And like, that's why I did this. And you're left with a negative 5. I would take a step back and go, where am I? And I go, well, look, I actually, I don't want the negative 2 here. So how do I get rid of negative 2? Well, I best thing to do is add two to it. And then if I do it to one side, I have to do it to both. So what's happened? If I go left to right here and resolve those little sums I created, two X doesn't change. Now minus two plus two is zero. That's why I did that. Minus five plus two is minus three. And then I'm almost finished. Uh, I still want X on its own, but I realize here that the only way or the way I want to get rid of the two is by dividing it by itself. That'll always work. If I do it to one side, I have to do it to everything on the far side, okay? Now, the two divided by two is one, okay? So one X is equal to minus three over two. They don't tell me to leave this in decimal place. I think I'm right. Now, if I wanted to test it, I could put negative three over two everywhere I see X, okay? I'm not gonna actually test this. Um, and just put it to the calculator and see does left side equal right side. What I'm gonna do for simplicity is, I'm gonna check my answer on the next page and brilliant. Okay, I managed to get it right. So a good 10 marks, um, nice question. It's consistent with the rules of algebra. It's just a matter of doing it. And we know we want X equals our answer because it says solve. I know this is an equation because it's an equal sign and then the rules of algebra come into play. Now this one here, part B is powers. Now it's only worth five marks, okay. But they're just testing the rules of powers. And I'm going to, as always, rewrite it, okay? So three to the power of four to the power of five over three to the power of six. Now, the first thing I see here is that this is the power of a power, rule three of powers. So I can simplify that. If I apply the rule, you multiply the little numbers. So four by five is 20, and that's still over three to the power of six. Now, that's my two. So then if I go, well, look, what's happening here? If these are the same base number, and they're both three, then I can divide them, okay? And division of powers says that I should take away the little numbers. The number on bottom away from the number on top. So I end up there with three to the power of 20 minus six, which is the same thing as three to the power of 14. Now, technically I should have been able to write that in the calculator, okay? So if I clear that off, and just move this across. That's a fraction three to the power of four. I just want to close the brackets and that's to the power of five on top. 
then the bottom was three to the power of six. This should give us the same answer. It's going decimal. Damn it. It's not as helpful as I thought it would be. Um, okay, it's not helpful. Um, now, if I want to check my answer, I suppose it's helpful. That's 4782969. Is three to the power of 14 the same thing? And it is. Okay, so again, that's, I suppose it's useful from that perspective. But the calculator doesn't display the answer there in powers. Um, and I don't know of a way of turning a number into a power. Yeah, I don't think there's a way. Okay, so that's part B. Not worth a huge amount of marks, but it's just testing your rules of powers. And it's worth noting, it's worth noting that in the maths tables, and it goes to the contents, if I look for indices and logarithms, that's the rule of powers we were just looking at. Okay. That's rule three of powers. That's the first rule we applied. And this is the second rule we applied, rule two of powers. Okay, so moving on, um, that's just the answer in the notes. And now I think I didn't do this. I didn't actually write, no, I did. Three to the power 14. It doesn't actually ask me to state what K is. So I think I was okay at that point there. No harm spelling it out to the assessor. Okay, so in this particular question here, uh, we have two linear equations, okay? Uh, 3x plus 2y is equal to 1, and then 7x plus 5y is equal to negative 2. Now, I would often do this um, with my students. I just have to find something. So I just opened up desmos.com and then clicked on the graphing calculator. And I'm able to graph these, these different lines. So I have them pre-programmed here. That's our first line, okay? Now, you'll notice here that it crosses the y-axis at, um, looks like a half, okay? And the slope there is the rise over the run. Okay, so you could take whatever if you wanted to, you don't actually have to for this question. Um, it's going down this far for going across this far. So whatever triangle you take, you should be able to find the slope or the rate of change. And my second line is this one here. Okay, I'm going to zoom out because at some stage, unless they have the same slope, they're going to touch. Okay, so if I zoom back in, now the point of intersection, Let's go all the way in, just to try to get it closer. Where is the actual point? I zoomed out more than I thought I had. Okay, God, I really did zoom out more than I thought I had. But we're looking about here. So that's, if you can see up here, it's nine on the x-axis, negative 13 on the y-axis. So that's what we should end up getting, because that's what this question is assessing. Both of these, this is the equation of a line. This is the equation of a second line. And they're asking you for the point of intersection. Now they're not directly asking you that and calling it out, but that's actually, that's what they could ask. And a different question, they might phrase it like that. And the logic behind this is that if I take either equation on their own, okay? So this first one, first one for example, three X plus two Y is equal to one. On its own, this is an equation of two unknowns and we cannot solve an equation of two unknowns. But if I look at the second equation, 7x plus 5y is equal to negative 2. Again, this is an equation of two unknowns, so it's not solvable. But if you compare two equations of the same two unknowns, so this is both x's okay, and both y's, well, then I can combine them together. And by following the um, elimination method, I can basically um, find out the values of x and values of y. So I'm gonna look at this and I'm gonna go, which one do I want to cancel first? Okay, now to make them cancel, we're going to use the fact that in algebra, I can do whatever I want to an equation as long as I do it to everything. So on this top equation, I'm going to multiply that by um, five. If I multiply every term by five, I'm gonna end up with 15x, two y by five is 10y, is equal to one by five is five. So I've just made it five times bigger. Now I want to, on my second equation, create a situation where something will cancel. So if I multiply this by negative two, you'll see what's gonna happen. Negative two by seven X is going to give me negative 14 X. Negative two by positive five is gonna give me negative 10 Y. And then negative two by negative two is gonna give me a positive four. Now, because I multiplied across by a negative, okay, the signs here changed. 
So when I combine the two equations, 15x take away 14x is 1x, and then 10y take away 10y is gone. 5 plus 4 is equal to 9. So I just found out that x is equal to 9. Now, if I look at either equation, let's do it for both. Okay, 3x plus 2y is equal to 1. I now know the value of x. Okay, so it's no longer an equation of two unknowns. Now it's an equation of one unknown. And if I resolve this, go left to right, 3 nines is 27 plus 2y is equal to 1. I want to solve this, okay? So I'm going to uh, use my rules of algebra. The best way to carry this 27 is to take 27 away from it. That would achieve it. If I do it one side, I have to do it both sides. Once I go left to right now and apply those little sums, well, 27 take away 7 is 0. We don't bother writing that. The 2y hasn't been changed. And on the right-hand side, 1 take away 26 is negative 26. Sorry, 1 take away 27 is negative 26. Now, I'm almost there, but I need to resolve this too. And the best way to get rid of that is to divide the 2 by itself. If I do it to one side of an equation, I have to do it to both. Now, 2 over 2 will cancel to give 1, okay, is equal to minus divided by a plus is minus. 26 divided by 2 is 13. So my x value is 9. My y value is negative 13. Now, hopefully, that's what I got here in the answer. Okay, x is equal to 9 y is equal to negative 13. Now here in the notes here, I've tested it, okay? I've put my value of nine back in to either equation. I've put my value of negative 13 back into the one of the equations, and I've chosen this top one. If it's correct, those two values, when you resolve left side should equal right side, okay? Now we're not actually asked to do that in this assessment, but you know, no harm. Now, I think the notes here, I've put in a different way of doing it, and that's the substitution method. And I might as well just use this answer here. There's my two original equations. Now, I'm going to take one of these, and I'm going to rearrange it for one of the unknowns. So in this case here, I've taken the top one, 3x plus 2y equals 1. And I've went, well, look, let's just rearrange this for y. So I've taken away 3x on the left. And if I do it one side, I have to do it both sides. Now, the consequence here is that on the left-hand side, this is going to, um, so then, um, because they've cancelled, 3x take away 3x is gone. I'm left with the 2y, I'm left with the 1, and then the negative 3x. So I end up with this statement here. Now, at this stage, okay, I want to rearrange for y, not 2 times y. So I'm dividing both sides by 2 in order to achieve that, because the ultimate consequence of that is that the 2s here will cancel you're left with 1y is equal to 1 minus 3x all divided by 2. Now, I now have a statement for what y is equal to. And in the substitution method, I'm going to take that and put it into the other equation. And once I put in, there's two unknowns here, but I, I now know a way of expressing y in terms of x, okay? Um, and I've just said that here. And then I substitute, instead of y, I put my rearranged statement for x. So now if you look along the equation, I have an x and an x, but it's the same unknown, so I can solve this. Now it looks a bit unwieldy, but I can do it. Okay, I just have to go ahead and get it done. So if I go left to right then, there's brackets here. Now the five here multiplies by the top of this algebraic fraction. And you can test this by going two times a half. Now, if I multiply 2 times a half, the only answer there that's correct is 1. If I was to multiply 2 by the top, I'd end up with 2 over 2. If I multiply 2 by the bottom, which would be wrong, okay, I'd end up with 1 over 4. If I multiply 2 by top and bottom, I'd end up with 2 over 4. Now, hopefully, we know that 2 times a half is 1. Even though 2 divided by 2 doesn't look like it, anything divided by itself gives 1. Um, 2 times a half is not a quarter. Okay, 2 times a half is not a half. Two over four is half. So the only one that makes sense is to multiply the five by the top of this fraction. Now I've done that here. Uh, five times one is five. Five times negative three x is negative fifteen x. And then nothing happens to the right hand side. So all I've done is remove the brackets. Now at this stage I have what, what looks like a problem, but the way to resolve this is to multiply each term by two. Okay. If I do that, okay, what's the reason I'm doing it is these twos here will cancel. 
So I've achieved what I wanted to, which is get rid of the two on the bottom. But I've created a problem in that I have to do these operations. T two times seven X is 14 X. Okay, they, the twos cancel, so now that's resolved. Then negative two times two is negative four. Now at this stage, okay, I'm almost there. I want to just try resolve it. And I'm doing this here by um, adding the X's. So 14 X take away 15 X is negative one X. And that's all I've done here. All the other things stay, stay the same. I want X on one side, everything else the far side. So I'm going to remove the minus one X. Now in this situation, I've moved it across the equal. Okay, so let's clear this off, just to make it simpler. And if you bring something across the equal, okay, you should change it to the opposite operator. So when this moves across, okay, it was subtracted, now it's added. Now the four, I'm moving that at the same time, okay, and it's subtracted on the right. When it moves across to the other side, it'll be the opposite operator, which is added. Now, all I'm going to do now is just go x, uh, sorry, 5 plus 4 is 9, and that's what x is. Now, once I know what x is, I can use either equation, and I might as well use the one I rearranged that gives me a direct statement for y. Everywhere I see x, I'm going to put 9, okay, and now because I now know what, what x is, put it in, put it through my calculator, and I got negative 13. Again, I tested it here to make sure that left side equals right side, but again, you're not being asked that. So, I would suggest that most people would probably use the elimination method, okay? And we should know how to use the elimination method. The substitution method will work just as well, but with this particular equation, because it's a linear model with a linear model, um, it's probably better off using the elimination, but we'd often have to use the substitution method if it was a problem involving maybe a line in a circle and seeing if they're a tangent or a chord or something where the two equations are, are fairly fundamentally different. So we do kind of need to know both methodologies. And it's one of these things with simultaneous equations, it's, it's going to be asked. It could be asked multiple times in different questions. So it's worth a whack. Like 15 marks out of um, the paper is, is a fair chunk of marks. And it'd be a pity to lose them out for something that once you get the hang of it, it's fairly handy. But it's just to remember how to do it is what's always the trickiest thing. So as always, if you want to copy the notes I'm working on, just send me an email at chaintroy at gmail.com. And don't forget to like and subscribe to get access to more playlists. Thank you.